Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're talking about chapter 2 in CT4, and it is on stochastic processes, or as I like to call it, stock proc. And as you can see, there are a lot of things in this chapter. This course is difficult. And what I'm just going to do in this video is I'm just briefly going to talk about each one. I'm not going to go into much detail because it is difficult. So I'm just going to be talking about the general things about them. Um, okay, what is a stochastic process? You're going to see when the first time you come across it, there's going to be all this weird mathematical language that they're using, the strange notation. Get used to it because you're going to be using it for this course. Um, but in a nutshell, a stochastic process, it's basically a random variable that changes or a random variable a long time. So if, if you could think of a dice as um, a random variable, you know, you roll your dice and you either get a 6 or you get a 2 or you get a 1, a stochastic process is someone who's continuously rolling this dice. So you get numbers 6, 4, 3, 1, 2, 6, 4, 5. And the stochastic process is that random variable a long time. So you're going to see you have you define your random variable and you also give your time which is in a type set like I said it is a little bit difficult it is very mathematical um, so you do want to read through these definitions and understand them be patient with your mind it does take time getting used to this stuff okay um, then there's this whole thing time set state space and sample path a sample path is just like an example like when I said six three four two five that's a sample path of rolling the dice the state space um, will be one two three four five and six because those are the different values that the dice could take on and the time set in this example if I'm rolling it every single second then that would be discrete discrete or if it was continuously, like every millisecond, a different value is being thrown, um, then that's continuous. The stock, a share on the stock market, they will have a continuous time set, but rolling the dice would be discrete. Uh, state space for the share stock market could be much bigger, and the sample path can be that little jagged tooth thingy magic. Um, so yeah, and I think we've just basically spoken about the examples of stochastic processes, so know that you can have discrete time, discrete space, continuous time, discrete space, discrete time, continuous space, and continuous time, continuous space. And there's all these various examples which you need to know. You could also then get some mixed up, which you know it operates in a continuous time, but it then changes at predetermined values. Um, and the big example with that is like retirements and deaths. And you can see how this starts linking in with um, Love actuarial courses. Uh, then you have these things known as counting processes, and that is where the state space is whole numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, it's a non decreasing function, so it's forever going up. And yeah, but you can read you can read counting process, not too difficult. Stationary is a statistical property, which means it doesn't change over time. So it means um, so let's say my dice, my dice that I was rolling randomly, that is stationary. The, the first 10 times I roll the dice, I'm going to expect the same distribution or the same values compared to my millionth to my millionth and tenth roll. You know, the dice is not changing. And whereas, let's say for the stock market, that may not be the case. As the company gets a better CEO and starts doing various different businesses, its distribution and its randomness is going to change. Um, now, to know if something is strictly stationary is quite difficult. To know that it's they've got exactly the same um, distributions, it's quite hard to do mathematically. But there is something called weak stationary which helps out with that. And this will be a typical exam question is prove that this thing is weak stationary, the stochastic process. And what it is, if the, the mean is, or the expected value are constant, so the expected value of here and here are the same, if the covariance depends only on the lag, and the variance is, this, you know, it's the covariance of those two things, and it's constant, 
Um, but basically, it's the mean constant, is the variance constant, does the covariance only depend on lag, then it is weakly stationary. And that means that it is possible that they are stationary, but we don't have enough evidence, so we use this word weak. Um, then you have increments. Increments are the changes between two consecutive values on a stochastic process. Then you have um, this thing called filtration, which is kind of like the by observing it over a long period. It's quite a difficult mathematical thing to get your head around. Then you get something known as the Markov property. Um, I like Markov. I just think it's such a nice thing. But basically, um, what the Markov property says is that in order to predict the future, you only need the current value because the current value contains all information on the past. It's a beautiful philosophical thing to think about um, in, as far as stochastic processes go. If the, if the increments are independent, it means that there, it has the Markov property. And I'll let you think about why that works because it is good to think in this course. White noise is something just crazy, it's like rah, it's all over the place. Um, it's the mean is zero, the covariance is zero, it's strictly stationary and it has the marker property, and it's just it's just craziness. Okay. You get a simple random walk, and what a random walk is when you start adding up these uh, random variables, and a random walk could be something like like this with my, I should actually be drawing this up, but I don't know how to do that on a PDF that I'm filming. Um, what are these buttons? Anyway, uh, so that's a simple random walk. Then there's, oh, and because it's simple, it's because you can only go up by one or you can go down by one by certain probabilities. And if it was symmetrical, then P would equal 50% because it would have the same chance of going up or down. Um, but then you can get more general random walks. Um, where your y value has got its own little mean and it's got and then yeah, the x would just be the sum of that that's that's statistics that's why i said study ct3 before you do ct4 if you haven't done ct3 and you're watching this video i don't know why you're doing that um because you're definitely not going to understand this final part because ct3 deals a lot with poisson processes and the poisson process or the stochastic Poisson process, it's quite a bit of a headache to get your head around mathematically. Um, it's, you know, I'll let you guys read this and you can read through it. I don't really want to do it because it is confusing. Um, but yeah, there you can pause all my notes and read them. I'm tired. Uh, but yeah, um, I will be continuing making videos for subject CT4. Like I said, I'm just going to be giving very brief introductory videos on this stuff. If there is a demand for me to go into detail, let's say on compound Poisson process, I can do like a whole 10 minute video on this with examples and give an entire explanation. But if I had to do that for every single thing in this video, then we would have to, you know, I'd be like a boring lecturer and take up 40 minutes of your guys time. So yeah, that is chapter two. Uh, you saw chapter one was quite rough and they don't uh, slow down. Chapter two is also quite difficult. So yeah, CT4, it's a tough one. I can actually see why you guys want videos on this. It is hard. I don't actually know how I got this exemption. Um, yeah, it was a tough exam. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button, hit subscribe leave me a comment. I always like to see what you guys are thinking and saying. Awesome. Cheers.